Bruce Cannon's rolling along on this Thursday, sitting here eagerly awaiting Sunday, Super Bowl 52, the Pats and the, the Eagles. And Steve, you know, we talk about the big storylines going into this game. After the game, what will be, you know, could it be the swan song of a Bill Belichick and or uh, a Tom Brady? Well, we know there's not going to be any swan song for a guy like Nick Foles. And when you look at Nick Foles and his path to where he is right now, as soon as this game win or lose is over, I look at Nick Foles as being in the ultimate catbird seat. I'll put it this way. If if it's all on Nick Foles, the Eagles are in trouble. If you're putting all the weight on Nick Foles, then your, your, your game plan's not working. It's obvious that Nick Foles is going to be a big part of this. And, and you know, the big question again is if it comes down to a final drive, can Nick Foles deliver? Do the Eagles have confidence in Nick Foles? I think. They have a lot of confidence in Nick Foles, especially after the way he performed against Minnesota. Incredible. 26-33, 352, three touchdowns, no picks against the number one defense in the league. So, you know, I think going into that game, there may have been some questions amongst the Eagles. Can we do this with yeah. Nick Foles? I think that's out the window. It's, I think this team is very confident in Nick Foles. He he got the shot in the arm when Wentz went down in the Rams game and the way he brought them back against uh, Los Angeles in L.A. in the, in the regular season. I don't think the moment is too big for Nick Foles. And, you know, there might be people thinking, like you said, you know, can he get it done if it's, you know, three minutes to go and he's got to drive them down either to get in position for a, a field goal or to score a touchdown to win. But I think Doug Peterson and the Eagles staff realize they have such a great complement of offensive weapons around Loaded. him. The two running backs, Ajayi and Blunt, I mean, both sledgehammers, thunder and lightning if you want to call them. And, and Zach Ertz, who may not be on the level of a Rob Gronkowski, but is a great tight end. And then you talk about the receivers that he's thrown to. So I, I don't think they, the Eagles coaching staff is worried if the moment is there for Nick Foles, can he get it done? I think they realize that if they stick to their guns, it won't come down to it having to be on Nick Foles' shoulders. Can you imagine what Nick Foles is going to be thinking as he gets on the field? I mean, he's going to have to take a step back and say, can you believe this? I mean, we go back we go back to 12, 2013. I remember him at Arizona. You know, I'm thinking, yeah, he's the guy. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think there was anything really there with Nick Foles. And then Chip Kelly takes over Philadelphia in 2013. And Foles gets on a roll. In fact, he had about a six or seven game stretch where his pass rating is like 120 plus every single week. It was to this day the greatest six or seven game stretch any quarterback's ever had mm -hmm. as far as a passer rating is concerned. He finishes that year with what is still the third highest passer rating for a season ever 119.2, higher than Tom Brady's ever had for a season, even his 50 uh, touchdown year. 27 touchdowns, only two picks. So, you're thinking Nick Foles is is now a star, and you're thinking of that system. Okay, you've got Chip Kelly, and he's developed a system. He's found the perfect quarterback. And then came 2014, and all of a sudden, a you're watching Nick back. Foles like, what happened? <laughs> I, it was like, what happened to the guy we saw last year? Yeah. He just disappeared. No confidence, turnovers, the whole nine yards. So after this, he gets dumped off, Kansas City, goes to Rams. He's just being shuffled all over the place, but it was very interesting that the Eagles before this year, now you had Wentz show some signs as a rookie, but we weren't quite there yet with Carson Wentz. They signed Nick Foles to a five-year deal, two years guaranteed, but they gave him a pretty good deal considering they had already Carson Wentz. I don't know if they, they felt something. There's sometimes a little karma works for you, but now he's back where he had been a star just a couple of years ago. Well, look at the Peterson factor. You know, Doug had him in, in Kansas City, yes. and, and obviously – even though Foles was not on the field a lot and wasn't doing great things, I'm sure that Peterson saw within the right system, with me working with him a lot more, as a, especially as a head coach, I can make something out of Doug Peterson. But again, you don't think you need uh, him. Nick Foles. You don't need Nick no, Foles. No, exactly. I mean, He's a great insurance And then as the policy. season goes on and Wentz is having this MVP season, you're just like, if you're Nick Foles, like, well, I guess I'm going to collect a, money, a lot of money to do nothing. No I wear mean, and tear on the body. This big guy is indestructible, and all of a sudden a freak injury, and you're out there. And, you know, I thought that Nick Foles showed signs but to get him where he is right now. Well, that's a great story. Look, Foles could be a, a, a huge champion. If, I mean, think about it. If they win the Super Bowl and he has a big game, 
Nick Foles never have to buy another beer in Philadelphia, that's for sure.